Have you ever wanted to make thousands of cute characters with varying attributes but have no programming experience? I'm going to show you how to make those right in After Effects. After that, you can do whatever you want with them, like print them out and put them on your wall, post them on social media, or even sell them to people online for real money. Hi, I'm Keith, and I'm going to show you a really cool way how to do this with Adobe After Effects and a magical plugin called Templator from a company called Data Clay. Before I show you how to do this, yes, Data Clay is sponsoring me for this video, but I do use their plugin in my regular line of work every single day, and I love it. It'll change the way you think about building content in After Effects. Oh, and I want to thank my longtime collaborator, Sean Frederick, for helping me with the character creation that we have called Super Secret Creature Club. And it's such a secret that we're showing everyone how to make their own. With Templator, you can connect your After Effects project to a data source, like a Google Sheet or a JSON file, and replace content like text, images, or video, all in a single composition, saving you hours or days of manual work. I'd say even sometimes weeks. You see, every row in your sheet is a new version of your creative, while each column represents the layer name, and what you put in each cell is what will appear in your comp. If not for generating thousands of cute characters, I would check out Templator for so many other countless use cases. I also want to preface this video by saying that I will not be covering the minting and deploying of outputs to the blockchain. The blockchain. The blockchain. But I imagine in the near future, there will be more accessible ways to conquer this task. I might save that for a future video. So let's get to it and make thousands of cute characters inside After Effects with the help of Data Clay's Templator. Let's do this. Now, there are a couple of ways I could have done this. I'm gonna show you one way, and then I'll show you another way to pull this off later. This setup, or rigging as they call it, is gonna be based on various comps containing all of the character attributes I wanna include. If you look at my project panel, you'll see a few folders of ears, eyes, hair, mouth, and tail. They each contain some pretty simple, natively drawn shape layers, and of course, with any After Effects project, you can of course use your Illustrator or Photoshop files if you'd like. I've also animated some of these, like the eyes and the tails. I'm no character animator, but I did my best to show you what is possible. If you can do it in After Effects, it'll play nice with Templator. To make it easy on myself, each one of these comps is the same exact size. This makes it really easy to just consistently stack them all on top of each other to create your character. So let's just start with adding the eyes layer. Now, normally, if you wanted to manually create some variations, you would option drag and replace the layer, export, option drag, and swap the layer again. We're not gonna do that thousands of times. And this is where the magic of Templator comes in. Templator is installed as a plugin in After Effects, and this is the Pro license, which offers some additional functionality to the Rig license and I currently have Templator connected to a specific tab in a Google Sheet. I want to tell Templator that I want to change the eyes layer. So the first thing I do is pull up the Templator effect and drag it onto my eyes layer. Then, super important, I want to rename this layer eyes. Then over on my sheet, I'll make a column header and call it eyes. Now, Templator will know that whatever I put in this column will pertain to my layer called eyes in my After Effects comp. The other thing I want to point out is the layer name source toggle here. If you click it, you see that the source is the name of the eyes comp, which in this case is eyes-1. Click it again and you see the layer name itself is still eyes. This is very important and something you'll frequently want to check when reviewing your rigging. So I have some comps with different eyes and I want to see what my character looks like with each one. Let's go to the sheet and start adding those row by row. The way you do this is by typing each comp name inside double curly brackets like this. I'll do this for each one. In the Templator panel, we'll go to the Transport section where we specify which row numbers we want to look at. The start row is two and the end row is six. Each time I click this next button, Templator is checking the sheet and pulling the next row and swapping the comp for that layer. If you look over here and toggle the layer source, you'll see that the comp is being swapped. And of course, you can see it. And again, note that the name of the layer that we gave is not changing, it's still eyes. Super easy, right? I'm gonna quickly do the same thing for the rest of the layers. So now we have a comp with eyes, mouth, tail, and for the hair and ears, I decided to make a layer called head-top 
because I didn't want to have hair and ears at the same time. And just with these four attributes and five versions of each, there are 625 character possibilities. Fascinating, right? And one other thing that I want to show you here is that you can easily turn layers on or off with Templator. Imagine you're working on a project where a client keeps asking to see the logo, don't show the logo, only show the logo on the 16 by nine versions, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's as easy as writing on or off in the sheet with the double curly brackets. I decided I wanted to do this for the mouth. So all I have to do is write off when I don't want a mouth and Templator will turn the mouth layer off. See? And then when I preview the next layer, you'll see the mouth I've specified in the sheet. Since I only have four mouth comps, this actually gives me an additional mouth that is no mouth at all. So I just picked some random combinations in my sheet and I just wanted to start to get a feel for how these different attributes look together before I get deeper into this. This is really fun because you start to see all of your prep work start to come to life. And don't forget, you can animate all of these however you'd like. Let's also put a text layer on top and give these characters some names. It's important with Templator that you draw an actual text box in AE so you can define the space for Templator to use. Just type some text, set your font settings, and apply Templator to your layer and name it. I'm gonna use name. Open the sheet and in a new column, put a header on name, and I'll populate some names and go back to After Effects. These work great. You're probably thinking, Keith, but how could I possibly come up with thousands of names? Well, with a little Google Sheet magic, we will get there, so no worries. Now, up until now, we saw some pretty basic implementations of Templator. This step is somewhat of a hack that I use a lot because I know that Templator can replace content in a text box, and I know that a hex value is text. Uh, we can make a text layer, call it say color-02, and type hex values into my sheet. Important side note, make sure your number format in this column is set to plain text. Otherwise, for some hex values that have leading zeros, your sheet will just strip those off. Let's preview this. I see the hex values, but what do I do with these? What I want to do is pass this text value to a fill. I have a shape underneath with a fill, and I'll just pick whip the fill to the source text value. And what is this error? Well, that's because AE wants an RGB color value. Fortunately, AE has a built-in function called hex2RGB. Pretty self-explanatory. You give it a hex value like so, and voila. Cool, right? I also want the character to have different colors. In my sheet, I'm calling this color-01. Let's go into the character's body. I'll just make a text layer like we did for the background, making sure it's using our value. We'll hit preview, and there it is. I like to play with color in my sheet too. These are just basic fills in the sheet, but it keeps my sheet visual. In fact, you can use any formatting uh, in your Google Sheet you want to keep your project organized. Super helpful. All right, let's do some new math. I now have five colors in addition to the five comps for each of the four attributes. 15,625. I want to add another color for our character's ears and tails, but I want After Effects to just do it for me automatically. And with the power of expressions, all I have to do is go into the fill for that shape and use the following expression, which will tell you the color and adjust the lightness value by whatever I want. There's a lot more you could do here, but I just want a simple color variance here. After applying this to some ears and tails, you can see how we now have a little more color variance in our characters automatically. So I mentioned some Google Sheet magic for the character names. This was a fun part to come up with. My friend Nick showed me his D&D name generator. I showed that to my friend Sean, who then suggested we try something with a set of Japanese phonemes. So I got down and dirty with Google Sheets and came up with this process. I have a tab here that contains a list of Japanese phonemes. And in my main tab, I have this filter function, which is pulling the list of names from that other tab and just randomly picking one. Then I do this four different times. And then in my name column here, I use the concatenate function, which brings them all together into a first and last name format. So now that you can see how something like the name text can be randomized, I'm just gonna apply that same principle to all of the other attributes. If we look at the items tab I have here, you'll see I just have a list of the comps and the colors. And all I do is use that same filter and random function and apply it to each row. 
And every time I add a new row or edit every single cell that has the random function, it re-randomizes. So now I can just make thousands of rows and they will all be random. Two final things to note before we get to exporting is this output column, which is the file name. And I'm automatically creating these file names with the concatenate function using all of the attributes that are now randomly being generated. So it's just pulling each one of these cells in here to generate these file names. And this target column will tell Templator which comp to use when it exports. So now's the big moment, exporting. Templator gives you a few options for this. You can export straight from render queue, but then you don't get the benefit of using your favorite compression presets. What I usually do is use the watch folder method. If you use media encoder, you might have never noticed this tab here for watch folder. With this feature, you can tell media encoder to encode anything that drops into a folder. My watch folder here is pointed to a local path on my desktop and media encoder will take anything I put in there and use this H.264 preset. In Templator's preferences, I'm going to check off Send to Media Encoder because I want MP4s of my animated characters. So let's select the first 15 characters from our sheet by typing in the row numbers and just hit this Replicate button. Let's open the Watch folder and Media Encoder and see what's happening in real time. You can see Templator and AE in the background working their magic. Each time a new character is complete, an AE project file is dropped into the Watch folder. This project file contains that single character comp. And then you can see Media Encoder making an MP4 of that. Media Encoder puts those in an output folder generated and puts the source project file into a source folder. I typically purge these source files pretty regularly. You don't need them after this. I want to point out a common mistake that I've seen myself and others run into, and that's to forget all about this column. If these are all the same file name, Templator and Media Encoder will just keep overriding the same one over and over again. So even if it's just an incremental number like so, then you will at least see every output. Otherwise, all this work will be done for nothing. Let's check out some of these outputs. So this is our output folder. It's got 15 MP4s in it. Uh, as you can see, the file names are all quite long, but they're auto-generated using the concatenate function I showed you in the sheet. Let's just take a quick look at these. <clears throat> these are all entirely unique from the name to the hair, the eyes, the tail, the colors, all made possible using Templator with After Effects and Google Sheets. And I'm going to make about 10,000 of these in a minute. I uh, just want to show you something else real quick. Now, what if you don't want videos and just want static images? Well, you can easily accomplish this with Templator's spot check feature. This feature is technically here, so you can output various frames in your video iterations and effectively spot check outputs to see if your data source is correctly populating and there are no rigging issues. Best to fix those first before running off hundreds or thousands of assets. You can export a single frame or multiple frames by simply specifying a comp marker, not to be confused with a layer marker. The name you give the marker will auto-append to the file name. Specify path and preset for your outputs and hit spot check. Render queue processes them and you're done. I want to show you another way that these characters can be assembled. Instead of using pre-built comps and using the curly bracket method in your sheet, it's entirely possible to pull in content by a file path. In this case, I've exported each illustration as a PNG with transparency. I put them in different folders for organization. In Templator, I just specify the footage path, and in my sheet, I just fill in the file paths relative to the footage path. If you look in the comp, we are now seamlessly using PNGs. You can even mix and match these if you'd like. And there you go. So up until this point when Templator runs, it effectively locks up After Effects until it's completed the rows specified. This is fine when I'm just making 5, 10, 50 of something, but beyond that, it's a bit of a problem. So that's where the bot version of Templator comes in. It's a separate license, and you can compare all the versions yourself at Data Clay site. Bot gives Templator the ability to interact in real time with your sheet. Instead of pulling the entire sheet down and processing them all, Bot will only pull small chunks of rows at a time, and only those that are marked ready in a render status column. After the row is processed, Templator Bot will update the row status. So I've actually made 10,000 rows in my sheet, and I'm going to render these all out as MP4s using Bot. They're all set to ready, and I've told Bot to process 20 at a time. 
It's gonna be a while, so I'll be back when it's done. And here we are, 10,000 outputs. I added this little strength indicator thing. I'll show you how I did that in a minute, also with templator and an expression. Let's take a quick look at some of these, shall we? So that's just a small sampling of these 10,000 uh, characters. Um, I do want to talk about a little bottleneck I encountered during the outputs. Um, everything was going swimmingly. Templator was, was doing its job and it was um, dropping everything into the watch folder and media encoder was doing everything it was supposed to do until it got to around five, 600 and then I ran into memory issues and media encoder just stopped working. I am on a 2020 M1 MacBook with 16 gigabytes of memory. So I don't know, pretty good for most things I do, uh, except when I'm running off 10,000 outputs, which I don't usually do. So the workaround for this was I ended up uh, having Templator put all of its outputs into a folder I called holding, and then I would let um, Media Encoder finish, clear Media Encoder, and then I would uh, drop, uh, drag like four or 500 of the files from the holding and put it into the watch folder. Media Encoder would then take over and uh, do its thing. Another thing um, I realized was that there's this option over here in Templator to purge all memory caches after each job. So I didn't have that checked off. So checking that off um, after each job ran, uh, Media Encoder or Templator would um, clear the After Effects cache. Media Encoder took about three seconds to output each one. Templator, you know, three to five seconds. Turns out that this would take roughly uh, 20 hours on this machine to export all 10,000 of these. Um, one nice feature about Templator is that you can actually have Templator multiple bots running uh, with the bot feature and you can name each bot and you can have um, each bot what can pull a certain amount of rows and process those on a different machine entirely. So, you know, my 20 hours, that could easily be 10 hours with two machines, you know, more powerful machines, whatever. You can have multiple machines. This could, that can cut down the time pretty dramatically. Let's look at this little strength indicator thing that I built. Um, it is basically a simple, um, uh, it's basically a trim path that's moving and showing, you know, going and going up to a certain percent. I define that uh, that number um, up here. Templator is taking this number in. So if I change this here, uh, you'll see the this changes over here. So I added a column here called strength, and it's basically just uh, a random number from one to 100. And when that pulls in, I need to um, actually convert that into an integer using this parse int function. So then After Effects knows that it's a number, and then you can basically apply that number, any number to any expression um, and control expressions uh, with Templator as well. And one final note that I wanted to share is that every time Templator uh, would pull this master sheet that I made and Google Sheets would actually redo these random functions. So even though the sheet didn't change, what Templator pulled in was, you know, considered by Google like a new request. So these the things that you were seeing in the outputs weren't the same as Templator. So what I did was I did paste values um, into another sheet. So I took this whole sheet um, just an example, if I copy this, you see RAM between is one through 100, and then I edit paste special values only. You see all this stuff changed because that's what happens when you have a random function. But this is no longer a random function. This is just a hard value. So I did that entire uh, sheet and I pasted it into the sheet so there wouldn't be any unpredictable randomness um, on the outputs itself. And that's how to create 10,000 little characters with Adobe After Effects and Data Clays Templator. I really just wanted to see if this was possible, and it is. And I would encourage you to check out this plugin from Data Clay. It's really cool. It'll kind of change the way you think about making projects in After Effects. If you have any questions, just drop a comment and I'll respond. And see you later. Thanks for watching.